Howdy all, grab yourselves a beer. It is time for some Path of Exile. Now, this is a guide to the incursion mechanics. Uh, so, Elva Master Explorer, the master that you'll occasionally encounter on your travels through Rayclass from about Act 7 onwards. If you played during the Incursion League, this probably is something you is nothing that you don't already know about. It's more intended for people that miss that league. Uh, so yeah, if that was you, then maybe maybe it'll be worth a listen for a refresher, but probably not. You probably already know this. Elva will appear in 8% of maps that you open, uh, as well as in 4% of the time when you complete a map, she will also spawn at a set location on the Atlas, uh, usually at a tier very close to what you just ran. So if you're running a tier 13 map, she might spawn on any tier 13 map after that. She'll appear three times in a map usually, sometimes twice, and in this map she'll be here twice because of my progression status. When you talk to her, she will show up a dialogue uh, where she'll present this, uh, this temple that you can see here. Uh, this temple I've already, you'll see down the bottom of the counter that there's two incursions remaining. At the start that counter will be at 11. And what happens here is that all of Elva's storyline revolves around you traveling into the past into a lost Vile temple. You'll go in, you will kill lots of things as quickly as you can, and that will change the structure of that temple. And you'll see here that um, there's a focus around one of the around one of the rooms. That is not uh, anything you the choice of which room can't be influenced by you. That's just done by the game. So let's pick this up off as a cartography by random, uh, by random choice, which is actually which is exactly what I wanted it to be. You'll then have two options. Uh, this will be this square here will be an approximation of the actual zone that you'll be sent into, which is about a tenth of the size of a map but it's densely packed with monsters and quite dangerous. There will be two bosses present in it. One will have this uh, switch around icon. Sometimes both will, but usually one. And that is telling me that there is Uramonti, the arch oh sorry, if I kill Uramonti, the architect of expansion, then this room will, will be replaced by the vault. The vault contains chests full of currency items. This one here says that if I kill Estazunti, Architect of the Vault, then this room will be upgraded to the Atlas of Worlds, which contains chests full of maps. Now, given the current state of the uh, Path of Exile economy, uh, maps, more maps is always a good thing. And so my goal is going to be to go into here, kill Estazunti, the Architect of the Vault, and then kill as much other stuff as I can for extra loot. Additionally, you'll notice looking here at the connections on the temple that I've already established a full path to every room in the temple. So you can see that if I was to go through here, you don't necessarily need to go through every room when you get into the temple for real, but I have that option. Um, however, I will also have the ability to add in an extra connection here between the officer cartography and the royal meeting room. This is connected by, you'll see here that the uh, that there's this sign that says lock door to the Royal Meeting Room. Unlock this with a Stone of Passage. One of the monsters inside this zone will, can, will hold a Stone of Passage. If there was more than one uh, potential doorway that could be opened, so if this was connected to two or more adjacent rooms, there would also be a chance of getting a second Stone of Passage in there, but one of them is guaranteed unless all of the connections are already made. So this Seder Sten here, and don't upgrade to the Seder Sten except for the memes, it's a terrible room, but we'll get to uh, strategy later. This is connected to everything that it's adjacent to, and so you would not be able to get a, uh, you would not be able to get a uh, Stone of Passage in there. But this one, even though it's indirectly connected, I can get a direct connection if I want. So. I've made a strategic decision that I want to upgrade this to the Atlas of Worlds, which means I need to kill Estazunti. Estazunti will be marked with this upgrade icon. So one of them is an upwards arrow, uh, or stylized upwards arrow here, and that's the upgrade. This is a switcheroo. This red and green switcheroo here indicates that you're changing the leader of the, of the, um, of the room. 
So my goal is going to be to kill Estazunti, and I'm just going to go into. I'm going to open the portal to the incursion. Elva will open this. There is a strict time limit inside, so get all your preparations ready. What you want to do is make sure that you precast any spells that make sense to precast. Um, golems are also quite dangerous. I have one up, but many people make a strategic decision not to. On the minimap, you'll see the location of Estazunti marked. These bosses have a fair number of hit points, and you'll notice that there's also a strict time limit ticking down. That time limit is like a breach. It goes up the more monsters that you kill. I have killed Estazunti. I didn't actually notice that I'd killed him. Uh, I thought he was a bit tankier than that, but he wasn't. I'm just going to continue clearing until I run out of time, but at this point I've already succeeded at my goals in this incursion. The next step to think of is your room strategy, and this is something that took us quite a while to determine during the actual incursion league, but the player base has basically solved the question of what's the best rooms to upgrade in the temple. And as soon as I just kill these last mobs, You'll notice here that the monster's kill bar is full. That means I've done everything that can be done, so I can just exit without waiting for the timer. All the loot that would have dropped in there drops here. So in terms of strategy as to which rooms to upgrade, the Atlas of Worlds is the best room. You should always upgrade as much towards it as you can. You'll see here that the Office of Cartography becomes the Atlas of Worlds. Uh, the other rooms that are solid, there is a Corruption Chamber which allows you to uh, use... It's basically like a, a Mega Varlorb that can only be used once and that has a 1 in 4 chance of giving of corrupting an item and giving it two implicit modifiers, two Varl implicits. It has a 1 in 4 chance of completely destroying the item, a 1 in 4 chance of bleaching all of its sockets to white uh, whilst, reserve, whilst keeping all the other... The other factors of the item as they were, and a 1 in 4 chance of re-rolling the item uh, as a Shaper or Elder Rare with the same item level but scrambled statistics and scrambled, uh, also scrambled sockets. All of those outcomes are bad except for the Socket Bleach and the Double Corrupt. However, the Double Corrupt can be so good that it's often worth taking the risk, just as it's often worth taking a risk with a Varlorb. So that's a Corruption Chamber. Uh, the next option that is worth prioritizing is the Sacrificial Chamber. And in this room, if you can get it to Tier 3, you will be able to sacrifice a unique item and you will receive in return a unique item of the same class. So that means like an Ancient Orb was used on it. If you put a belt in, you'll get a belt out. And that will be able to be any item that could drop um, anywhere in the game, including including ones that normally can't drop, like Headhunter, for instance, can only drop in an area with Zana's Nemesis mod. Uh, it bypasses that restriction. It doesn't bypass boss unique uh, boss unique drop locations. So, for instance, Void Forge can you can't turn an item into Void Forge with it because Void Forge only drops from the Uber Elder encounter. But uh, if, if it's something that could drop from a trash mob, if you're in a zone with the right properties, then the Corruption Chamber can do it. The other thing the Corruption Chamber can do is it can also be used to upgrade some of the unique items that drop from the final boss or from various things within the temple. In any case, uh, the Corruption, the Sacrificial Chamber is worth your while considering. Uh, lastly is the one that will surprise people. It's, it leads up to the Museum of Artifacts, which is the miscellaneous goods. Uh, the miscellaneous goods option. And I'm just having a quick look here because it's the warehouses here. This warehouses is the tier 2 version. Upgrades to the Museum of Artifacts at 3. This is the one people didn't think was very good for a while. Uh, it contains random chests. And these random chests are mostly going to be rubbish. They're mostly going to be armor and weapons. But enough of them will be better chests that this is often worth getting. I almost always find if I upgrade it to tier 3 that I will get a chest of maps in there. And it's always the case that 
once you're talking about a high monster level, uh, maps are almost always the best thing to get. Finally, the Hurricane Engine is not something most people go for, uh, but if you can get this to the Storm of Corruption, which is a tier 3 version, you will get a one of the Tempests that affects item drops. Uh, corrupting Tempest, and I believe you can also get Radiating Tempest, which is the increased item quantity modifier. So at tier 1 or tier 2, these rooms will do will basically do very little for you. Uh, the Tier 1 is a slight difficulty increase. Tier 2 allows you to do a lot more damage at the expense of your en enemy sometimes being able to do more. But the Tier 3 version is uh, definitely very worthwhile getting at least to try it out once or twice. In my experience, um, the Corrupting Tempest will result in you getting a lot of um, six socket and even six link corrupted items throughout the entire uh, entirety of the temple, but it does slow down your clearing a lot because you're always wanting to go and um, get the Corrupting Tempest buff. For that reason, uh, if you're familiar with Tempest mechanics, give it a try. If not, don't worry, it's not so great. Then there's a few things that just make, uh, that you do things like increase monster pack size throughout the temple, they're alright. And then there's a number of rooms that make the boss harder. The boss will be in the apex of Atzalatl. And don't really do much else. And then there's junk rooms like the Satyr's Den that just have some, some effect in them, like containing tormented spirits that, yeah, doesn't really do very much for you at all. In any case, um, so my strategy there is prioritize the map rooms, then prioritize the corruption chamber, then prioritize the sacrificial chamber, then prioritize the warehouses, so the random items, and then finally go for things like the barracks, just anything else that looks good. Do try pretty much everything once though. Finally, the, temp the temple's zone level will be based upon the uh, levels in which you do at, uh, do the Elvers incursions inside maps. This is a monster level 80 zone, so this that incursion that I just did then in the video in, will count as an 80. Uh, the actual formula is that it averages all 11 incursions and then adds 10 to that. That is the monster level unless that exceeds the highest zone that you did an incursion in, in which case it will just be equal to the highest zone. Uh, in practice, this almost always means that your uh, temple level will be equal to the highest zone that you did an incursion in. Uh, anyways, that's all there is to say on this until the actual temple itself, which will be up next. Also, just look at all that loot. Nothing, nothing any good there but you will get huge piles of stuff drop when you finish one of these incursions because you just kill so many monsters so quickly.